Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in today. This is your host Nino inviting you for another adventure with the Book 8088 version 2 computer. A very sweet modern day laptop imitating essentially hardware of the 1980s, having an Intel 8088 compatible NEC V20 processor, which in reality is about twice as fast as the Intel 8088, but this still a uh, temporally authentic piece. It is really an old CPU. It's featuring 640 kilobyte of RAM, a compact flash card on lieu of a disk with the humongous size of 512 megabyte, something you wouldn't be having in the 1980s. There, it's more realistic to have a 50th of it or something, like a 10 megabyte disk, but doesn't matter. I'm grateful for that. And in the version 2, we are seeing a couple of changes compared to the first version of the book 8088, in particular that Windows can be configured to have EGA mode. Warning, in order to do so, you better have a Windows installation on the hard disk so that you can refer to it for the setup files. And I mean installation not as in installed form, but as in folders in which you have put the files from the Windows 3.0 install images. Having done so, you can have a nice EGA screen as shown. The screen is brighter, definitely a lot, if compared to the book 8088 version 1. But the most fascinating change from my perspective is, of course, the presence of a serial port yeah, and a parallel port that I do not care all that much about. But the serial port, of course, opens lots of possibilities. Now, if you connect it, as I point out in a different video, namely the two center pins on the lower row together, the lower left, upper left, and upper second from the right pins, like short circuit them, so to say, then you can circumvent its demand for hardware flow control and you can establish a three-wire connection to a serial adapter. Here I'm having a standard USB serial adapter. I'm showing that in more detail in a different video, but what you can now assume is that I do have a working connection to a USB serial adapter. So that's sweet, what do we do from here? And I decided it is time to surf the internet and to do so with onboard means. Now there are of course very nice communications programs for MS-DOS, but I thought why not offer you something you should be having installed anyway. And Windows 3.0 does have a terminal program. It is in the accessoires. So like if you wouldn't have selected that already, it is Alt W and then you select the accessoires window and there you go. To your terminal program. I shall now press enter in order to open it. So there we have our terminal and indeed it is blinking here black instead of telling us that nothing is working because of this cheatery there with the wires which are suggesting that a terminal connection is possible. Now, this is a little bit of a too small window and will need to be maximized. I'm going to press Alt Escape. Or was it Alt Space? Or Escape? Hey, what you doing? Okay, Alt Tab to get back to the terminal. And I think it was Alt Space. Yes, Alt Space in order to maximize. Alt Space and X maximizes our terminal window and makes the whole thing a little more usable. So as a next step towards getting an internet connection, we will need to establish proper serial communication parameters. Now the way people do the internet connection with such old machines usually is to connect 
over a serial connection to some bigger computer and simply use its internet connection. The simplest version, of course, being a Linux machine or a Mac OS machine or something like that, a BSD or some other sort. And basically, this is how everybody, his dog and his grandmother, are connecting old machines to the internet, essentially using them just as terminals. We are about to do the same, but with a twist. For I really would like to do that over my Android phone. And the issue here is that Android doesn't actually easily offer access to a USB serial connection. Now, there are some terminal programs which have that, but other than that, the situation is pretty dire. My first details of doing that I explore in other videos, yet to be shown indeed, possibly by the time you see this, but I'm just going to skip over and just, just march ahead in order to connect this laptop over a smartphone and surf the net with the Lynx te text browser. So first things first, <laughs> this USB connector evidently will need to be minimized somewhat, right? Because my phone just has a smaller USB-C slot. Okay, then let's get some communications parameters straight. So Alt S is going to get me into the settings and then C is going to get me into the communications details. So here I'm at the communications details and I can pick a baud rate data bits, parity, flow control, and so on and so forth. I find it so cool that I can pick five, maybe, maybe five, but definitely six data bits. Like this is so antique. We don't want that evidently. So we're going to go down for, you know, period authentic is certainly 9,600. That was for a long time, the standard speed. Even 300 was not out of use in the 1980s. But let's say 9,600. Data bits 8 is fine. Stop bits 1 is fine. Parity none is good. Flow control none. Com port com 1. No parity check. No carrier detect. OK. So by now we have set up our communications program to talk to our Android phone. Now the question is how do we make that cooperate? And here we will be using a little trick. We will be using a serial to TCP bridge. That is a program which is essentially channeling a network connection to a serial connection and vice versa. So the network connection we shall be establishing via Termux. Termux is such a sort of mini Linux environment for Android phones. And when I started, yeah, my God, there is already the dollar sign. And I shall be starting here a Telnet server. That's something like an SSH server nowadays, but it was unencrypted. It was exceedingly simple. It is a bit like connecting through Netcat. And in fact, Netcat can connect to Telnet servers. So the way you do this, is via BusyBox. So BusyBox Telnet to do, like Telnet demo on port, whatever you want, is going to give you the, um, yeah, how do you call this? The server. Good. Before we do so, it, it might be nice to just say if config to figure out what's the IP address that we're actually having. Like what's the address of this thing? in case I need it. So it's it's going to be 10.003. Okay. And now starting the busybox command. Let, let me first clear the screen so that you see what's happening better. Okay, so here it goes busybox. And boom, we have a Telnet server. It's It's not visible in any fashion. We just know it's running. That's lovely. But now let me minimize this. Okay. And let me select split screen operation. Split screen. Split screen with what? 
well split screen with something called tcp urt tcp urt like this this icon over here like this this one yeah above the duck duck go one okay tcp urt starting is gonna be our transparent tcp to urt bridge i'm just gonna keep the phone that way so you can see both sides better now there are two things to define here the one is gonna be the serial connection the other one is gonna be the tcp connection well maybe it's time that i plug in now my usb serial adapter so that we actually have a serial connection all sorts of programs want to access it no we don't want to give it to anyone and we're going to say we will connect to tcp as a client on port 2323 which is the same port on which we started the telnet server so now whatever happens it's gonna go to the telnet server <coughs> and up here we are having the usb urt which is disconnected we're going to say connect allow access yes and very carefully putting it down has a terribly finicky tendency of simply disconnecting okay so this is running now and now i should be having already the telnet connection what happens if i say pwd pvd oh -ho. you see i'm at home in thermox so i have successfully accessed the telnet server through the bridging connection and now of course it will not be difficult to say links www bbc.co.uk and let's look at the british edition of the bbc it's one of my favorite things to visit and here i can now you see i, I am now in the internet and i can scroll forward by pressing spacebar and yeah seeing things happening though ah, the news are terrible as always so what are we having here <sighs> uh, what am i gonna click on and most things i don't want to read <sighs> ralph fine says that video audiences have gone soft i don't care <laughs> so okay sports headlines who cares let's just go anywhere nigeria aim to deny ivorian hosts in african final what happens if i press enter and read a little bit about african soccer huh And that's how it very slowly updates. Very good. Now we are having some sort of page and I think I might be able to increase the screen just a little and facilitate your participation in this surfing adventure via smartphone on a book 8088 version two. So there we go about sharings from England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. A colorful graphic featuring Nigeria players Ademola Lukman and Victor Osimhen and Ivory Coast players Frank Kessie and Sebastian Haller either side of the African Cup of Nations trophy and an image source BBC Sport. That's great, we don't see images, but I'm truly expecting that it was a great image. <laughs> and yeah, that way we are now surfing the net on a book 8088. That, that's really it, that's the end of the adventure. Once we're done, we're going to simply press Q for quitting. Are you sure you want to quit? I'm not sure you saw this, but this has appeared like in the middle of the page. I'm gonna say simply yes. And that's it. <clears throat> I'm out 
of the browser. I'm back in my normal environment and if I say uh, yeah PWD yeah then I'm just again back home in Termux. I can now press you know exit and just get out of the telnet server so we have no further connection here and I can go about uh, disconnecting here the two connections great and in general I can actually ditch the entire connection thing so that's it we are out of the internet I can press alt F and X it's gonna ask me whether to save the current changes and I'm going to say yes I don't want to set up this connection every time file name in C windows oh my god serial hmm I'm going to call it serial or no I'm going to call it internet internet okay good good so this is the end of today's adventure which I hope you found entertaining and useful it is indeed possible to surf in a way that reminds the early Mission Impossible movies. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope to greet you here soon again for further adventures. Some of these things will be shown in more detail in future videos and here I'll have to ask for your patience. I did not build up these details in, in a day. I just wanted to swiftly show them to you and I apologize if anything was done too fast or remained unclear. I'm ready, of course, to ask to answer your questions to the best of my knowledge in the comments. See you soon. If you're not a subscriber yet, I would be most happy if you consider to become one. Have a great evening. And from me, goodbye.